Now, the other day I made a video talking about how basically Star Wars fans should just be allowed to enjoy or dislike whatever they want when it comes to Star Wars. That they should be free to either embrace or reject whatever parts of it they want or consume any combination of it they want. From the new Disney stuff, to the original George Lucas stuff, to the now what's called Legends, but what's once called the Expanded Universe. And maybe a little ironically shortly after posting that video, I had someone send me this article from CBR.com titled, The Star Wars EU is dead, time to accept it. It then goes on to read under that title that, The Star Wars Extended Universe was beloved by fans, but it's long dead. It's time for fans to accept the EU is dead and embrace new Star Wars stories. Which is maybe one of the oddest and dumbest things I've ever heard when you really think about it. I mean, it's almost like saying, well, since Amazon is making new original content in Middle-earth that is not perfectly aligned with the works of Tolkien before it, that it's different from it in some ways, that people should declare his work, Tolkien's work, obsolete or dead, that they shouldn't waste their time reading the Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit or watching the Peter Jackson films, when they can watch Rings of Power instead, when they can just watch the new stories, that the old stuff will uh, hold them back from enjoying the new stories. Which I suppose is actually kind of true in a way, isn't it? I think your best hope for truly enjoying Rings of Power is to have little or no knowledge of Tolkien's work. Just like your best hope to get as much enjoyment as possible out of the new Disney Star Wars canon is to not know the expanded universe. To not know how others handled these characters and stories before Disney ever did, especially the characters of the original trilogy who uh, certainly were handled with more reverence by those who wrote the EU than those who created the sequel trilogy, for example. Though, like I said at the top, you're certainly free to enjoy the Disney stuff more, or some of both if you want to, make your own headcanon if you so desire. And so yeah, the writer of this article, Jamie Parker, they can hold any opinion they want about any iteration of Star Wars they want. And if they're not a fan of the EU, that's perfectly fine. And they certainly don't seem to be when they sum up their article by saying, for all the hype surrounding the EU, it was largely a mess and its death makes Star Wars better. Which, okay, that's certainly an opinion you can have, but I can't help but wonder just how much EU content they've actually consumed, because even though, sure, it's not always the most coherent thing that has ever been created in history, with a lot of that having to do with, for better or worse, trying to adhere to what George Lucas was doing, while he wasn't, to be blunt, he wasn't so worried about what the EU was doing, he would oftentimes overwrite things from it. Anyway, I do wonder just how much this person has read or even knows about the EU, especially considering throughout the article they refer to it as the extended universe and not the expanded universe, which sure just might be what they call it, even though as far as I have ever really recalled, I don't know or really remember too many people, if anyone, who calls it that. Generally those who know it and know it well, in my experience at least, refer to it as the expanded universe, not the extended universe. Now, I'm not saying it's not possible. They're a huge fan and have read a lot of it, if not virtually all of it, and that's what they call it after all these years, despite everyone else calling it something different. But it does tend to say, and maybe I'm wrong, but it does tend to say they've likely not consumed all that much of it, if any at all, for all we know, before deciding, as they also say at one point in this article, that it's some sort of barrier to entry to the new stuff, which is just silly. I mean, if the new stuff was indeed superior to the old, if the new Disney canon was much better than the expanded universe, then I'm not so sure the point would even need to be made by the article. I think if what Disney was doing with Star Wars or has been for the last decade, if it was great, and mind you, I have enjoyed a good deal of it, but if it were that great, most diehard EU fans, who are Star Wars fans first, I'd argue, they would have, maybe begrudgingly, I think they would have accepted that yes, the EU is no longer being supported in favor of the new canon. But even still, even if that was the case, even if it was clear cut that the new canon was better, that doesn't mean you ever have to declare that the EU is dead. There's just no reason to do that whatsoever. As I said at the top, people can enjoy both or enjoy whatever stories they want from either or. Because even though, no, the EU was not always great, not every book or comic in the EU is fantastic, and no, it wasn't always perfectly consistent with itself either, but there are indeed some truly amazing stories in there. And so overall, in my opinion, it's worth diving into if you're a Star Wars fan. I don't know anyone that I've recommended giving it a chance to and who have taken me up on that. I don't know anyone who regrets that decision to pick up some old EU books or comics and go on a journey through a different iteration of Star Wars brought to us by people who, quite clearly, had a deep love, understanding, and reverence for the franchise. 
And that's why this article, I guess you could say, annoyed or frustrated or rubbed me the wrong way. Now, because again, this person can't hold any opinion that they want, one that is completely different from mine about something related to Star Wars, but they're doing the exact thing I sort of argued against doing in that video the other day. That they're trying to tell people how they should consume or enjoy Star Wars. They're trying to tell people to let go of hundreds upon hundreds of Star Wars stories because they seem to have something against them, or that the new canon should automatically be the only one embraced these days for reasons. And that's not to say it's nothing but hate for the expanded universe in this article. They do point out that yes, the new Disney stuff does, at times, borrow from it and tries to pay homage to it in its own way. They also point out that it would have been very difficult for Disney to adhere to the expanded universe when creating new stuff, that discarding it allowed them to do something completely original with the sequel trilogy. Which, in theory, sounds like it could have been great or interesting, or would have been had they done something great and interesting with the sequels instead of doing, well, what we got with them. I myself have said before that, from their perspective, I understand their decision to not keep the expanded universe, which is not the same as me being in favor of it or condoning it, I'm just saying I get it from their point of view. But what I don't get is the need by some to attack and destroy or kill the expanded universe, or why it couldn't have just continued alongside the new stuff. And I've recently been looking more into what happened after it was discontinued by Disney nearly a decade ago now, and the movement by some at the time, and still to this day, to save it or bring it back, and the battle they faced. And I've been finding out things that I certainly didn't remember hearing about at the time, and I'm assuming a lot of people didn't want anyone to hear about them or realize just how much opposition there was to canceling the EU. But anyway, that is hopefully a topic for a future video, and though I don't know the true motivation behind writing this article, or even if there is one beyond getting some clicks with the clickbait title it has, but you can't help but notice or wonder about the continued desire by some to, and to quote my least favorite Star Wars movie, to let the past die, or to kill it if you have to. It seems like nowadays everything that was done before needs to be buried and forgotten in favor of doing it better now. Everything needs to be remade and reimagined for the audiences of today. And it seems like we're actively encouraged to, again, let the past die. To forget about it and pretend it never existed instead of going back or doing anything from simply enjoying it for what it was, or to remember it and to be reminded of both the victories and mistakes from our past. And though no, the expanded universe is not the most profound thing in human history, losing the stories from it is not akin to the burning of the Library of Alexandria or anything like that, but you can't help but wonder if this constant remaking of virtually everything is more about the death of creativity and relying on what worked before to sell again, or is there truly something a little more sinister going on here? But that I suppose is a discussion for another time. Well, that's all I got for you this time. Now it's your turn to take to the comments below and tell me what you make of this article, and I'll include a link to it in the description below should you want to check it out for yourself, which I always encourage you doing. Don't just take my word on all of this or rely on my interpretation. Come to your own conclusions. Either way, do take to the comments below. Let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.